um, YouTube so for publication I want to say good afternoon I'm sure you're having a wonderful time at home uh, it's a wonderful day it's Sunday and I'm sure most people are back already from church service so tonight I'll say this afternoon we'll be talking about uh, laparoscopy HSG and uh, uh, hysteroscopy. So all these terms, you know, we use in the medical world, they're a bit confusing. Sometimes we do this some tests and do infertility and these names can sound similar, confusing. So today I'll be explaining and going through what these names and these tests mean and when they are done and how they are done so that you have an understanding of all this. If for any reason you're just joining the video or you're late to join the video, don't worry, you can watch the video over and over again at your own free time. Um, I want to be sure that people can hear me first of all. So if you can hear me on Facebook, uh, I've got uh, one of our monitors here. If you can hear me well on Facebook, let me know. Just give me a thumbs up. And if you can hear me properly on Instagram as well, please give me a thumbs up so I know and I can continue uh, the talk this afternoon. Um, you know, always all the time facebook does changes and they try to keep us on our toes so um sometimes we change the way we do things facebook for some reason they are trying to restrict how many uh you know uh, uh letters character letters you can post at a post so you know we have to always tweak things and also adjust as we proceed on facebook i can see adebo yadeyemo she's saying she can hear me all the way from lekki nigeria thank you adebo yadeyemo good thank you for checking my audio there and uh, so you know facebook comes up with different things all the time and we always find a way around all these things so we are always always trying to improve um customer um uh, experience sometimes it's very difficult i will tell you the truth if you've managed a group on facebook you understand what i mean and uh, atg has been since november 2015 we are close to almost almost six years now running so uh, trust me i'll tell you something is uh, discipline and consistency and persistency showing up every day that can that makes it happen here and uh, most importantly i want to say thank you everyone as well for making it interesting because if you guys are not here to listen to what we say sometimes it can be a little bit not interesting so the fact that you're here makes it wonderful for me personally and for you and you most importantly uh, i can see people all the way on instagram here they can hear us they can hear me loud and clear thank you sweet something Shalewa 5, and Zuzubi, Elizabeth, Olaide Jinodu. And uh, over here we have Sisiya Sunday and, and, and Chidima Oji, Chinwe Blessing. So basically, um, these three terms I'll be discussing this afternoon are like investigations, tests, and they can be used for treatment. The commonest one which everybody understands is the um, HSG. HSG is hsg right all right so i know this is in reverse but by the time i get it edited on youtube it will be you know proper damn it will be proper not reverse okay hsg is estero okay sapingogram okay and uh, we have a laparoscopy and we have hysteroscopy okay so these are the three things i'll be talking about today so if you're coming late don't worry you catch up you can watch it over again at your own free time first of all let's talk about hsg hsg what most people know you're going for infertility tests we want to check if the tubes are blocked or not we do hsg hsg i always tell people as a test is to check whether there's any blockage in your tubes or not the purpose of HSG is not to unblock your tubes. Don't forget, the purpose of HSG is not to unblock your tubes. The purpose of HSG is to see and to know whether there's any blockage in your tubes. Okay? Yes, I know people, they've, they've been trying for pregnancy for a long time, and they went for HSG, and suddenly they try again the following month, and they got pregnant. It's possible that whatever was causing the blockage, at that point was dislodged and the tube became open it's possible so in such cases the chances the fact that that blockage was unblocked by the east hsg is possible 
but the purpose of hsd is not to, to deliberately unblock tubes it is to check if the tubes are blocked or not so this is a typical womb let's make it bigger sorry so this you know i always like to draw a uh, womb that's where we everybody came from uh when we were born you know so that is the womb there sorry let's make it a bit smaller here sorry i don't need to be perfect with this to be honest okay okay and that's the opening of the tube same thing here tube opening of the tube there we have it uh, we have the wall of the womb there have the wall of the womb here okay so that is your womb on this side here we have the ovary attached to the womb there we have the ovary here attached to the womb there okay that's the ovary very good so during hsg okay when you go we want to check if there's any blockage along the part of this tube along the part of this tube so we put a tiny cannula very tiny sometimes it can be uncomfortable so i always tell people whenever you're going for hsg uh, ensure you take some painkillers like paracetamol before going for hsg so you, you know so, so you're comfortable because hsg can be very uncomfortable especially when the dye is going in so when you come to the uh, to the um, X-ray room, because HSG, HSG, HSG is an X-ray test. When you come to the H HSG to the X-ray room, you lie down on the couch with your back and your head, your face facing upwards. Your legs wide open. Sometimes it's supported with some uh, leg rest on the couch. We're not pushing a dye. It's a dye. It looks like water, but it's not water. We call it dye or contrast. Okay. Sometimes the contrast could even move into your blood vessel. It doesn't do harm, but it's not to be injected into your, into your blood vessel. The purpose of this dye, we push it through your vagina into this tube here. Okay, the dye goes in, goes in, and it pours into your womb cavity. Okay, and the dye will now find its way across into your tube, and it will pour into the tummy. Okay, so in your tummy here is your intestine, 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 like that. So the dye will pour through. We take x-ray and we see the dye coming through. When we take x-ray, we see the dye coming through into your tummy. Very visible, clearly, on x-ray. And when we see that, we say there's no blockage. And the way we report it on your x-ray paper is there's bilateral tubal patency again we say that there is what bilateral tubal patency what it means is just that there is no blockage in the tubes and both tubes on either side left or right they are patent they are not blocked case closed that is what we need that is what hsg is designed to do All right but i've seen like i said again earlier i've seen people that have done hsg for here in where, where i work here in the uk Soon after we done the HSG, they go and try for pregnancy. We need a month or two, they get pregnant. It's definitely possible that there was some small, small, tiny debris, like a tiny, tiny, tiny particles, whatever it was, that was blocking the tube, making them not to get pregnant. It's possible. And during that HSG, it may have been dislodged and they got pregnant. So HSG is to check if the tubes are open or closed. We can use HSG, okay, to check if the tubes have are blocked from previous infection that was not treated that was treated or not properly treated for whatever reason we can do hsd for that some people they've had their tubes blocked intentionally as contraception what we call bilateral tubal ligation they've had their tubes blocked before and after their tubes has been blocked they want to see that okay this blockage has worked they can't get pregnant again they come for hsg and we do a test three months after the tubes have been blocked to see if the tubes are open or closed so HSG can be done, can be used for so many things, can be done for so many things, okay? It's just one of the things we use it for, to check, basically to check if there's blockage in the tubes or not at all. Like I said again, but don't go for HSG with the premonition that you want to go and use it to unblock your tubes, you'll be disappointed, okay? Go with, a, with an open mind, clear mind, and then see what God can do. That is HSG. So like I said again, HSG is an x-ray test. 
And when do you normally go for your HSD? Usually, uh, what I usually do is that I tell patients to call as soon as they see their bleeding on day one. They see their uh, menstrual bleeding day one, they call. They call the center. And then we book them for HSG from around um, day four to day nine of their cycle. During that time, we know that they are unlikely to get pregnant. But we also give them warning, okay, that two weeks before that day, before that day of uh, them coming for the HSG, they should abstain from sex. So we tell them to abstain from sex or use condom two weeks before their period and they come for the HSG around day four to day nine, before day 10 of their cycle. And when they come, we do a test of pregnancy to ensure that there's no pregnancy in the womb. We don't want to go and pour a dye, contrast dye in the womb when there's a pregnancy there, risking potential risk of miscarriage. So when they come, people come for HSG on that day, we do a test of pregnancy to ensure that they are not pregnant on that HSG. When you're going for HSG, try and take some painkillers like paracetamol. Okay, you can also take ibuprofen if you're not allergic and if you're not uh, suffering from ulcer. If you're suffering from ulcer, just take paracetamol and codeine before you come for the HSG. All right, so HSG is designed primarily, like I said again, to see if there's any blockage in your womb and in your tube. Sorry. So that's your womb again there, and that's the vagina there. That's the cervix, sorry, that opens into the vagina. On this side here, you have your ovaries, wonderful. And on this side here, you have your ovaries there, left and right. So we're back again to our discussion. If you have any questions about HSG, you can ask, ask them now. Then I'll continue my discussion about uh, laparoscopy and then hysteroscopy. Okay? Before I continue, the next one I'll be talking about is hysteroscopy. I'll take laparoscopy last. So I'll move from one to two here and then three here. I'll be talking about hysteroscopy. Okay? Thank you, uh, CC Sunday. And if you're watching on Instagram, thank you so much. Don't forget that we have a seminar coming up this month. And the seminar for this month is going to be about IVF and multiple pregnancy, June 26th. Okay? If you attend the seminar this month, you're going to get a discount at the ATG IVF Center, guaranteed. The reason is that, you know, because of the dollar increases in Nigeria now, Naira is unstable, dollar is always causing issues, we know, <laughs> with, with all due respect, costs are going high. But if you attend the seminar, we'll be walking you up and giving you ideas and teach little bit advice to ensure success in your IVF treatment. So if you attend the seminar, June 26th, you'll be getting a discount for your proposed IVF at H at ATG IVF Center, okay? Now, someone's asking a question. I went for HSG not knowing I was pregnant. That is why you should abstain from sex or, and, sorry, and, when you get for HSG, they must do a test of pregnancy on that spot before you go into the X-ray. Somebody asked a question, which I missed. That person said, um, <laughs> I've missed that question. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, thank you, Chi Chi. Yes, you are learning every day. I'm happy with that. Doctor, I went for HSG. Yeah, I got that. So, so if I, I've been bothered with this, he's saying that, what is the importance of HSG after IUD removal? So IUD was put in there, whether copper coil or myrina, but ideally IUD is, my, is copper coil. So if you had your copper coil removed, that is being removed, and you're told to go for HSG, there must be a reason. Probably you've had your copper coil removed and you're not able to get pregnant and your doctor has advised to do HSG. Probably they are suspecting that your tubes has been blocked. That's all. Case closed. Okay? That is for Ife Abimbola Ojo. Thank you all our moderators for showing up here and for putting up our links. If you want to register for one-to-one -one consultation with me on HSG, you can always use your premium services. Please don't send direct messages to my messenger. There are about 1,000 messages on my messenger. Honestly, I can't go through them, you know. Uh, so if you want direct direct one-to-one -one consultation with me, just go through our ATG premium services. Otherwise, you can always attend our programs like this and watch our discussion and ask questions if you're opportune to freely. We give these things freely. We talk about these things freely. But if you want that one-to-one -one time with me, that means I have to take time off my work if possible, take time off my family time if possible to 
pertain to you. So ATG is called Ask the Gynecologist and it's one of the biggest group on Facebook today by the grace of God through you, which we use as a medium to explain and to uh, you know get people to, to, to understand how the body of a female pay person works. That is HSG. Somebody is saying that why is my womb paining me? I don't know. It's maybe you have a fibroid, maybe you have endometriosis, maybe you have an adenomyosis, maybe you have ovarian cyst, maybe you have a uterine polyp. I don't know. But first of all, get swabs done, do your vaginal swabs, get ultrasound scan to check your womb, to check your ovaries. Then we can know what is possibly causing pain in your womb. Because we are not magicians. I'm a doctor, I'm a scientist. I do tests, observe tests, observe you, look at things, make deduction, and tell you what's possibly causing your pain or discomfort, okay? So now let's move on to hysteroscopy. Whenever you see anything in, in the medical world where you hear hystero, 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 it means womb. Hysterical, pain from the womb. Hystero is womb. So we've done hysterosarpingogram. Hysterosarpingogram is hystero is the womb. Sarpingis is the tube. Tube for orchestra, tube for tomophone. Sarpingis is whenever there's, there's a conduit for any fluid or water or air to pass through. Your tube is a conduit for fluid or for air to pass through. So it's called sarpingis in Latin, in old Latin. So hysterosarpingogram is study of the womb and the tubes. Gram, probably two extra. Now we have hysteroscopy. Again, that word, hystero, hystero. Hysteroscopy means looking into the womb scopy scope means to look telescope periscope kaleidoscope scope everything when you hear scope 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 means to look so when you hear hysteroscopy it means to look into the womb cavity hysteroscopy is not an x-ray test it is a camera test i cannot look into your womb with naked eye i need to look at it with a camera so hysteroscopy is when we put a camera into your womb as opposed to hysterosarpingogram, where I put a, ca a cannula and I push in a contrast x-ray dye to study the womb cavity and the tubes. I've seen people, they've gone for HSG and they were told that there's a possibility that they may have a polyp or they may have a fibroid in the womb. You can, we can do HSG and we have sus suspicion or suggestion that you may have fibroids or polyp in your womb cavity, but nobody can deliberately confirm that you have fibroids or polyps in your womb cavity without doing ultrasound scan. But to be honest with you, the best way to definitely be sure that you have a fibroid in your womb cavity or you have a polyp in your womb cavity or you have scar tissue or additions in your womb cavity is through hysteroscopy. Yes, all these three things or more can be suspected during HSG, but we cannot definitely confirm if you have all these three things Except we do hysteroscopy. We look ourselves in naked eye, you know, we look ourselves into your womb cavity. So what is it? What is hysteroscopy? So assuming this blue line again is my camera. So no, let's use the black one. So this black line is my camera. A rigid camera which comes with a camera at the tip there and it's connected to a machine which brings I can see it on the screen. So with a camera. We're pushing some fluid into your womb cavity to distend the womb cavity. And the camera will show us all the details in your womb. If you have a fibroid in the wall of your womb, if you have a polyp like this, like this in your womb cavity, see, fibroid is attached to the wall of the womb in most cases. Polyps, they have an attachment like this, like a stalk, like this. You see polyp like that? You can have a polyp or we see some uh, scar tissue additions in your womb cavity. We can see all these things on hysteroscopy by looking directly into your womb. So this is basically what we call diagnostic hysteroscopy. So diagnosis. Diagnostic hysteroscopy, okay, is to basically to know if there's a fibroid, basically to know if there's a polyp, basically to know if there's scar tissue in your womb and in some cases if we are suspecting cancer of the womb we can also take biopsy of the womb cavity i have seen cases where people have had dnc but there's always a remnant of the uh, pregnancy tissue in the womb and we want to go and check ourselves where this remnant of the pregnancy is we go through hysteroscopy to see exactly where that pregnancy is hiding and obviously after a miscarriage and then we scrape it out 
sometimes too with hysteroscopy like i said again we can use it to do endometrial biopsy basically biopsy of the womb wall to see if there's any possible reason of suspicion of cancer in your womb we can use hysteroscopy to do biopsy in some cases too i've seen people they've had myrina coil or copper coil inserted into their womb and it's lost or it's embedded into the wall of the womb so we can also use hysteroscopy to go and locate the misplaced myrina coil or misplaced copper coil in very rare exceptional circumstances we can also use that hysteroscopy to retrieve them and to get this dislodged or embedded or misplaced coil for away from the womb if it's still there so these are the things we can do with hysteroscopy we can do diagnostic and sometimes too if we find these things like scar tissue in your womb what people call uterine synecy if we find a fibroid in your womb in the womb cavity if we find polyps there we can treat them and scrape them off by what we call operative hysteroscopy operative or therapeutic hysteroscopy operative or is same thing as therapeutic hysteroscopy okay we do all at the same time hysteroscopy in nigeria comes at a range of about 250 grand to 330 grand we're getting set to be able to do that for you at the ATGIVF center. We'll be starting the hysteroscopy unit soon in the next one to two, next four to six weeks. Okay, start our hysteroscopy. You can get it done there for different, different reasons. Now, if you have any question about hysteroscopy, let me know before I move to the last one, laparoscopy. There's a question here by Daphne Kensey. Can a sperm be transported from one country to another? It's possible, but at ATGIVF center, we don't have such facility yet because for you to move sperm from a different country to another country, there'll be legal issues over there, paperwork done, incubation, transportation, guarantee optimal temperature and pressure, and also the consent of the owner of the sperm. All this, they are too intricate and too cumbersome. We don't get that done in ATG. In fact, it's probably going to be easier for you to come yourself and deposit the sperm at any lab. Okay, so it's possible to transport sperm, but I don't get into that nitty gritty as, as, as at yet. Thank you. So, let, so let's see if people have any other questions on uh, hysteroscopy before uh, we move on to talk about laparoscopy. Okay, now thank you, every guy, everyone, for watching over there from uh, Instagram. Abiodun Adela was saying, Can HSD be done to a pregnant woman? Why? We've already said that the purpose of HSG. Is to know if there's blockage in the tubes some and i also said again that before we do hsg we tell you to abstain from sex for at least two weeks or more and also on the day of your hsg we do test for pregnancy what i'm trying to say is that nobody and i also said again that nobody will go and pour the dye of H, uh, the contrast of hsg into your womb cavity when you're pregnant so what if your woman is pregnant there's no need for hsg because she's already pregnant so there's no need for HSG. So that question should not even arise, to be honest, okay? I'm so sorry to say that, but that question is totally irrelevant because HSG is for getting you, is to know if your tubes are blocked. If you're already pregnant, then there's no need to do HSG anymore. Doctor, what can cause tube to be blocked? Tube can be blocked from maybe infection in the womb cavity, infection in the tube, abscess in the tummy, they can cause damage to the tubes. Can thyroid go for, can a, a patient with thyroid gland problem, if you have thyroid gland problem, you can go for a IVF, okay, once we treat the IVF. Can HSG make the cervix open? No. HSG does not disturb or damage the cervix. It's only when it's not done by uh, properly can it cause damage to cervix, okay. I've seen cases where people trying to hold the cervix during HSG, they've torn the cervix. Yes, it's happened before. It's very, very rare, but it can happen. But HSD does not damage the cervix intentionally, okay? Someone is saying, can someone, can doctor explain uterine scarring and its treatment? The treatment of uterine scarring, uterine scarring, uterine synecy. The treatment is hysteroscopy. I said it already. The treatment of scar tissue, uterine scarring, uterine synecy, Asherman syndrome, they're all the same. The treatment is hysteroscopy. Okay, we go in with the camera and we see the scar tissue, all these things, the scar tissue, and then we resect them. We take them away and they are gone. What can cause scar tissue in your womb? Infection, previous operation, previous fiber surgery, previous, previous C-section, uh, previous DNC, they can and so on and so forth. They can cause tissue. 
they can cause scar tissue in your womb. Can HSD be done after my myomectomy since September? It can be done. If you're not able to get pregnant, you haven't finally getting pregnant, then HSG should be done for you if you've had a previous um, fibroid removal. Can you explain therapeutic hysteroscopy? I already explained it, okay? So watch the video over again regarding therapeutic hysteroscopy. Therapeutic hysteroscopy is the same thing as operative hysteroscopy. Basically, if we find fibroid, we remove it. If we find polyp, we remove it. If we find scar tissue in the womb, uterus and AK, Ashama syndrome, we remove it. If we can't locate your coil because it was because it's not found again, we look for it, we remove it. And so and if you want to take biopsy, we do that during the HSG. That is basically operative or therapeutic hysteroscopy. Okay. Low ovarian reserve means that you have very, very few eggs in your ovary. That's all. Low ovarian reserve does not say you can't get pregnant. It only says that the chances of pregnancy is a bit low for that person. Okay. Endometrial thickness is not a sign of polypso. Polyp is, is entirely different. Polyp is like this. You see, when you go into the womb cavity, you see a structure like this in the womb, okay, attached to the wall of the womb. That is polyp. Okay, so you, you put a camera, and people can have multiple polyps, different, 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 different polyps in the womb, okay? So let us go and talk about, let us ask, ask some more questions here before we go for uh, laparoscopy. Is HSG done or after? See, I already explained when HSG should be done. I already explained it here. What the video over again? Listen attentively, okay? I already explained when HSG should be done from around day four to day nine of your period, ensuring you've not had sex at least two weeks before the two weeks before the HSG. And when you go for the HSG on the day of HSG, we do urine test of pregnancy. Is stereoscopy doesn't take more than forty five thirty minutes maximum. Forty five minutes maximum. It, hysteroscopy is done okay what causes it for a pregnant woman not to grow after abdominal surgery miscarriage in most cases we don't know maybe field implantation maybe a chromosomal problems from baby sometimes the pregnancy doesn't grow let's talk about laparoscopy let me have a quick a quick uh, cup of water here so Let's move to laparoscopy. Like I said again, when you hear scope, 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 it means to look. When you hear la laparoscopy or endoscopy, it means to look into your tummy. Laparoscopy is basically an operation. Operation, okay, is an operation. So you know you lie down on the couch. That that's your bum, legs. That's your uh, chest chest wall, your tummy, your um, um, umbilicus, and your, uh, your, your, your hip region, and your legs there. Okay? Over here, you have your womb. Let's put it in red. So that, that's your bum there, okay? That's your, uh, your head over here. Head. And that's your legs there. That's your leg here, okay? Over here, you have your womb. And you have your bladder as well here. And you have your bowels here. You see your bowels, your bowels, everywhere there. That is your womb, that's your bladder, that's your bowel. So, laparoscopy means basically we are looking into your tummy. Okay? And how do we do that? We put you to sleep. You must be asleep for laparoscopy. To look into your tummy, you must be asleep. So what we do is that we now make a tiny cut, about one centimeter cut, around your umbilical region here, and we put in a camera. For laparoscopy to be done, three things must be put in place. Basically, you must have the equipment available. Number two, we must have the surgeon with the requisite skills to do the procedure. And the last thing, the patient must be suitable. If you're too thin, or if you're too big, you're too obese, it's going to be a difficult thing to do laparoscopy, or it's going to be a risk to do laparoscopy because there are blood vessels around there. there there's bowel there. So when we're putting it in the camera, there's a slight risk of damage to the bowels or to the blood vessels, which can cause an emergency. If we suspect damage to your bowel during the stereoscopy, 
or damage your blood vessel during a stereoscopy, we have to open you up to quickly repair. That is why a stereoscopy must be done with a properly skilled surgeon, good equipment, and ensuring that the patient has been properly worked up before the laparoscopy. If we do laparoscopy, what are we looking for? Now, remember I told you about hysteroscopy. Hysteroscopy, we are looking into the womb cavity. So that, that in hysteroscopy, you remember, that is the womb cavity. We put a camera there. We're looking into the womb cavity doing hysteroscopy. Okay? Hysteroscopy, we can't see outside the womb. But laparoscopy, we can see outside the womb. Laparoscopy, we can see outside the womb, but we can't see inside the womb. Laparoscopy, we can check the bladder from above. We can check the, 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 the bowels. We can check the liver, okay? We can check the spleen. We can check many, many things. We can check between the b b bowel and the womb. We can check if there's endometriosis. We can check if there's ovarian cyst and we can treat it. We can see if you have a ectopic pregnancy, we can treat it too. Laparoscopy can be done by a surgeon to check the bowels, appendix, uh, spleen, liver. But laparoscopy too can also be done by gynae to check for womb and uterus. If I do laparoscopy as a gynecologist, as, as gynecologist, I'm only checking the womb and the ovary. And if I see anything that looks abnormal with the bowel, with the uh, appendix, I call in the surgeon to deal with their baits. Okay? So laparoscopy, from gynae point of view, is to look at your womb and your ovary from outside. We, but we can't see the womb cavity. Laparoscopy cannot show inside the womb. It can only show outside the womb. Okay? Laparoscopy will not show inside the house. It will show outside the house, the fence. Hysteroscopy will show inside the house. It can't show outside the house. Laparoscopy can show outside the house but not inside the house. A stereoscopy can show inside the house, but not outside the house. The house is the womb. What are we looking for on laparoscopy? We're looking for ovarian cysts. We're looking for endometriosis. We're looking for fibroids that, that are outside the womb. We're looking for um, appendix, that is appendix mass, so on and so forth, that we can treat and attend to. Some people, they have... Chronic pain, pain that we can't we can't know what, what's causing their pain. We've done series of scans, we can't find out why they're having pain. We put in laparoscopy, we see endometriosis, we see endometriosis cysts, we see endometrioma, we see appendix swelling, we see you know, we see so, so many things like that, fibroid, and we can handle it at that point. Now you can see what all those things mean. You can understand them a little bit. So watch the video over again. Probably I'm sure you will learn some few things during the uh, discussion. You will learn a lot, definitely. So now let's take more questions now and then we close this uh, page. Somebody's asking, what is the difference between laparoscopy and endoscopy? They are the same, okay? Laparoscopy, endoscopy is the same, okay? Laparoscopy is to look into your tummy cavity. Endoscopy is to look into your tummy cavity. The only difference is that we gyne, we use the word laparoscopy more. The surgeons use endoscopy more. That's all, okay? That's all. Is both laparoscopy, but the surgeons they use endoscopy more. The gynae they use laparoscopy more. Okay, that's not the difference. To register for uh, period services, just follow the links that uh, our team members, my monitors have already explained on this page, and they'll tell you how to get access to me for one-to-one -one consultation as soon as possible. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bakari Bukala, for joining. God bless you all. Let's see more questions. So, somebody's asking a question. So, what causes pelvic and abdominal scan? What can pelvic and abdominal scan do? Pelvic scan, abdominal scan, they will detect any mass cysts in your tummy. But sometimes, scans can not be reliable. Scan will say, we think there's something so-so and so that thing is there. Okay, some scans can show scans cannot show endometriosis. Scans will show endometrioma, but it won't show endometriosis. Some scans cannot show more, more, more details. Some scans they are so inefficient, we have to rely on CT scan. But to be entirely sure, if you if you see something on scan and you want to deal with it that needs operation, operation, it has to be through laparoscopy or through um, hysteroscopy or through 
um, um, uh, 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 laparotomy, okay? If you got blocked tubes, we can try to unblock it through what we call idotubation. But idotubation only works less than 25% of the cases. So if your tubes are blocked on HSG, the best thing will be to consider you doing IVF. If the tubes are blocked, I don't know when it was blocked, I don't know what caused the blockage, but if the tubes are totally blocked, IVF will be the probably next thing on duty to be done. Okay? Most cases, pelvic scan will not detect endometriosis. It's too small for scan to detect. But if you have endometriosis on your ovary, what we call endometrioma, scan might detect it. Yeah. But for scan to detect endometrioma, that means your endometriosis must be so bad and so severe. Somebody's asking how she can register for ATG antenatal. Chinenye, can you please uh, attend, please, please attend to Graham Owam Gift, how she, she or she can register for the antenatal services. Laparoscopy can be used to unblock tubes if there's any possible remedy. Not all block tubes can be remedied. If there's damaged tubes already, laparoscopy might not be able to unblock it. But if we see any possible remedy we can do during laparoscopy, it can be used to unblock tubes, but not all the time. In fact, very rarely. Baka Ebola is asking, you did hysteroscopy and laparoscopy last month, but the doctor said there are more scar tissue, so it can't... Oh God, that thing, I, lo I lost that. I lost that question. Oh, Jesus. Oh God, excuse me. Uh, okay, so the doctor said um, she can't get to my left tube where there's ideal saplings, but but something is gone again. Okay, so, so let me just say, uh, Pedro, I couldn't read your question or, or entirely. I lost the question because more questions came in, so I lost your question. Sometimes during laparoscopy, these organs, the tubes, the ovary, womb, they are all stuck together, matted together, and we find it difficult to dissect around them. If that's the case, we will stop the surgery because doing further surgery will probably cause more damage than good. So maybe that was the case and that's why the surgeon stopped that procedure. Somebody is saying, when the tubes are blocked, what is the best to do? If tubes are blocked, the best thing will be to consider IVF. If the tubes are blocked, best thing will be to consider IVF. If the tubes are blocked, that will have been discovered anyway through HSG. If the tubes are blocked and we've done hysteroscopy, it might obviously show that. We can also do what we call hysteroscopy and dye test to see if the tubes are blocked or not. Hysteroscopy, sorry, sorry, laparoscopy and dye test can also be used to know if the tubes are blocked. So if you've done laparoscopy and dye test to check the tubes and the tubes are blocked, the answer will be to consider IVF. Your doctor can't get to your left tube because there's adiosarpings there. They can try to drain the adiosarpings, but adiosarpings is usually from infection that has caused swelling around the tubes. Hydro means water. Water, sarpings, tubes. Water around tubes becomes because they've been swollen, because they've been swollen from infection. So if you have adiosarpings, we can try to drain the adiosarpings during the laparoscopy, but it's possible that there's already infection that might have already damaged the tubes, and you might need IVF if the tube is gone. But for your doctor, might have been able, might, might, perhaps your doctor has been able to do diet test during laparoscopy. If you come and I see somebody like you, that I see that there's so much damage, the best thing would be to also discuss diet test to check the tubal patency while we are doing laparoscopy. Flushing the tubes does not always work. Yoshola and Wanshuku, flushing tubes only work less than 20%, 25% of cases. In, if the tubes are damaged, flushing the tubes really work, from my experience. Okay? Okay. Thank you, guys. So, if you have idiosarpings, the best thing will be to drain the idiosarpings during the laparoscopy or treat it with antibiotics, but if it's not recovering, it's not remedying that situation, best thing will be to consider IVF as a treatment for the idiosarpings, okay? Thank you, guys, for following me today. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you soon. Once again, my name is Dr. Lolade. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you.